Welcome to the Music Ed Matters podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Emily williams Birch, and this podcast, it exists for you. Whether you're a music lover, an educator, a choir member, each week we bring guests to the show to help explore what matters in music. I'm so glad that you're here. Welcome to the show. Hello and welcome to the Music Ed Matters podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Emily williams Birch, and this is is the last episode of 2021. I cannot wait for you to hear this one. You are about to hear from Jackie Hamilton. Jackie is a musician, a performer, an educator, a life coach, a friend, and she is light. She has the nickname of Sunshine, and y'all, you're about to feel some sunshine. But along the way of these sunshine rays, you're going to be empowered with tools to make 2022 your most resilient and epic year yet. I really struggled with how to name this episode, so I'm not even gonna tell you what I named it because I haven't decided and I've changed my mind a couple times, but I want you to go into this episode knowing that you are the only you there is. Jen Sincero says, sing like the bluebirds of the universe are your background vocals. You are epic. You are the only you, and the world is so lucky that you are in it. In this episode with Jackie Hamilton, you're going to learn how to to be an asset, how to how to use how to use you, the, how to come as one, but to stand as ten thousand. How how nothing that you've done is wasted. You're going to hear a couple secrets. I share a couple secrets at the end, but I can't wait to see what you take from this episode. How you, as they say in Black Panther, show them who you are. This, this one was really life-changing for me, and I hope that you are able to find the inspired life you've always dreamed of, thanks to some of the great tips in this episode. This episode is brought to you by our sponsors, the Kinnison Coral Company, Kaleidoscope Tours, and I cannot thank you, the listeners, enough for all that you do to support this podcast. As we wrap up 2021, I can't help but reflect on how thankful I am for this space to learn and grow together. Without further ado, Jackie Hamilton, and an episode that is too epic to even title. Today, on the Music Ed Matters podcast, we welcome our last guest of the 2021 year, Miss Jackie Hamilton. Hey, Jackie. Hello. I am so excited to talk to you today. How are you? Great. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. I, I I'm excited. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited about, you know, t- talking with you today. So, you know, thank you for having me. You nervous? You have like the most gorgeous voice on the planet. Aren't you a performer? You're not allowed to be I, all nervous and stuff. I am. Well, you know, everybody has a little jitters every now and then. So, you know. You oh, know, that's so good. Part that's of so the good. flow. It's all okay. I love it. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever heard you sing and my jaw just hit the ground. It, it was like butter. I just could not hear you sing enough. And I remember going back to some of my friends and saying, I have to be friends with her just so she can sing for me more often. That's funny. Thank you so much. I will never forget it. I know exactly where I was sitting. It's like a flash bulb (laughs) memory in my brain. You have to tell the listeners, who is Jackie Hamilton? I am, I'm a lot of things. Like many of us, we carry lots and lots of titles. Um... The one that I am most proud of is being the daughter of two beautiful parents. That's my favorite title. But, you know, because because I had that had that title and I had that experience with them, um, it allowed me to carry some other titles. So I am also a music educator Um, because of their support. I'm able to do that Um, because of what they gave me um, as parents. I'm also a life coach and I'm able to take from what they've taught me and give that to other people. Um, I'm a mother, I'm a wife. Um, So those are the titles that I adore and that have carried me through the bulk of my my life and my career. Um, I am no, I've been told by several people who do not know each other that um, my name, my nickname has been Sunshine for so long. So I've learned to kind of, you know, embrace that name of Sunshine. Sunshine. Oh, that's (laughs) adorable. I do. I, what, I, what I say is, okay, I'm sunshine. I'm going to accept that because these people apparently see something in me. So I'm going to say that I am light. That is one of the things. And I, and I hope that I give that to people um, 
from you know people that I meet, whether they be strangers or 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 family members that I've known through all my life. Now I'm starting to really like link into that and capitalize on that. Yeah. And so I want to be light. I want to be light for my students. I want to be light for my colleagues and for my family. So I ride that title out a lot. So I'm a lot of things. One of my favorite titles that I've just received um been within the past year is instigator and I love that Ooh. and it's in a but it's in a good way right so it's like yeah. instigator like I'm able to like stoke flames and and passions and and get people like on their game to get things projects that they want to do get them done or or to get on their um academic game and and you know uh do better than academics come up with a plan for their careers after college so I carry a lot of titles I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the titles that that I have um, so yeah, I'm also, and I'm also a singer, even though that, that title's kind of shifted over the past year. Um, so I've, I'm kind of moving out of that role a bit and, um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. My life has been full of beautiful experiences that have all come together to create this person that is talking to you today. I love this. You are a, a sunshine instigator that <laughs> has been made possible by amazing parents and life experiences yeah. as a mom and a teacher and a singer yeah. and a wife. I love it. Yeah. It all ties together so beautifully. Yeah. Tell us about your story. How did you get into music education? Okay, so I was always a, uh, you know, I grew up in the church. So uh, my first experiences of singing have been in the church. Um, my dad, if you if you if you could ask my dad, you know who, you know what is Jackie good at? He was like that girl. That girl ain't fit for nothing but singing. That's a, <laughs> you know <laughs> that girl ain't fit for nothing but singing. But you know that's what I always did in the church with him. You know he would call me up to sing with him. But my first experience with choral music was in middle school, um, with my uh, teacher. Her name was Miss Christopoulos. So she was my mm -hmm. first chorus teacher, and that's where I kind of got my feel for choral music. I was like, I like this. And I found out I was pretty good at it with the sight singing and the theory parts, not knowing that that was something that I could do. I taken piano, so I'm sure all of that worked together, you know, when it came to the singing. Then I went on to high school and Ms. Christopoulos was also my ninth grade high school teacher. She left and then I had Miss Beth Bowens, who's now Beth Williams. She was my chorus teacher and she taught us like freshman, uh, college freshman theory one and a little bit of two in high school. So okay. I was like, oh, I'm pretty, you know, finding out that I'm pretty good at this, you know, and, and singing that alto line and I'm really digging it. So she came to me, she's like, you know what? I think you should go to Georgia Southern you audition for Georgia Southern's music program. And I was like, oh, okay, not really, you know, <laughs> you know, just going along with what the flow. Sure, sure, whatever you say. Sure, I'll do it. And so I got over there and, and I got, you know, was accepted into the program there. And um, was going in as music education, but after hearing my uh, applied teacher, uh, Dr. Sandro uh, Buller, sing Vici Darte from to Tosca, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I want to do, like, I want to do that thing, like, like tell <laughs> I want stories. Have a one of those. I want that, <laughs> that one, I want that yeah, one. Yeah, I want that one, that one right there. So I, so I remember going to the library that night after a faculty uh, recital, hearing her sing that, and I, um, went to go listen to the recording, you know, then you had the records. So we had to mm -hmm. listen to it on the records, you know, or the, um, and it was a couple of CDs. So I was able to listen to it. And I was like, I want to do this. I like the whole storytelling thing on stage and um, did that. And, you know, that was, that was the hook, hook there. I saw myself being an opera singer. Uh, <laughs> then I went to um, graduate school. I started off at Georgia State. I went to graduate school there. And then I met this dude, and you know, <laughs> just this dude. No yeah, big. he kind of interrupted my studies a bit, so I I, I put the ma uh, master's, the graduate work off um, for uh, over what 10, 15 years. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy, crazy. But um, nothing's wasted. I was able to gather all those things mm -hmm. that I got when I was in the music ed program, when I did the uh, performance route and uh, worked a bit downtown Atlanta at First Presbyterian of Atlanta, where I was their mm -hmm. staff soloist. So I got to do a lot of work with the orchestra, like solo work, beautiful concert series. And I got to teach uh, their preschool, you know, music. Ed. Like I, it was like, you know, melding of all the things that I've learned. Um, and so all those things kind of led me um, eventually being uh, the interim director of choral activities at Savannah State once I moved back to Statesboro and 
I just, I was, I remember being um, in bed. I was like crippled from gout. Like I couldn't walk. I had this uh, mm. arthritic uh, condition and uh, I saw the, you know, saw that they needed an interim director, you know, temporary, very temporary position until they could find a permanent person. Cause you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just see what happens and just throw mm. it in there. And lo and behold, they said, okay, we'll take you for just a year until we find someone else. And I was like, cool. But in my mind, I was like, I'm going to make it very hard for you to let me go. <laughs> <laughs> so I went back and finished my master's at Georgia Southern. And Whoa. I got on, oh yeah, absolutely. And I ended up getting the permanent position there. So, and, you know, between all of that, getting back into the whole music thing, because I set out for so long, um, I was introduced to a lot of the the uh, artists in the area and, and was I sang at, a, I was the one of the cantors for the Cathedral of uh, St. John the Baptist, downtown Savannah, which, oh, that was so a glorious beautiful. experience. Oh, was, oh, to sing in that place and to sing with those people, a beautiful experience. So all of those things kind of, you know, stacked up, you know, in my music career. I, I, I Like I said, nothing's wasted. I pulled from all of that to, you know, for every experience that I've gone through, I pulled from those, those things. Uh, and I'm grateful for them. So grateful for them. Yeah. What are some of your favorite musical things that you pull from? Like when you're sharing stories with your students and you're pulling from experience, what are you sharing? Um, one of the things that I share, probably the most uh, critical, the, the most important thing that I share um, is their question about stage fright. Their, um, how, do you, how do you battle stage fright? And I'm not going to lie, that has always been a problem for me because my voice was so different than everyone else's that I've always been around. As and I never knew butter. Even... It's pure butter and gold <laughs> and amazingness. Just in case you're sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but you say my voice and I hear it in my head and I'm like, oh, I, I'd like you to sing now, please. Well, it was my biggest insecurity growing up. Um, I really? no one else, yeah, no one else sounded like I like I wanted to sound like everyone else. The light, you know, soprano voices that could go up the range was like super high. And then the literature was so much better. <laughs> I wanted to be able to do those things. And I used to always, I was so self um, self-conscious about my voice. Um, and I, I wasn't free from that until I went back to get my master's at Georgia Southern with Dr. Hancock, Dr. Um, Hancock. And he said to me, uh, Jackie, you can kind of carve your own path here. Your voice is so unique and so different you can kind of do what you want to do with your voice. And when he said that, I was like, ding, that's right. I am different. I am unique and I can sing whatever I want. You know, I can pick the literature that best fits my voice. So I came up with this whole slogan, my voice, my choice. Like I can, Ooh. you know, sing whatever, you know, whatever fits my voice and be proud of that thing. So with my students, so when it comes to um, stage fright, I, I got over that um, maybe about three years ago. Um, I was singing at a venue down in Savannah and it was probably the freest I've ever been on stage because I took the attention off of me and I placed it on one, the experience, but two, my parents and then my ancestors before them because they could not, they, they could not do what I was gifted to do or was given the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. So I took the attention off of me and my nerves and it was an opportunity. It was my, my opportunity to say thank you. So every time I stood and I opened my mouth and sang, I was saying thank you to all of them. And then I envis envisioned them all around the room. So at the end of the performance, when I, bow when I bowed, I was bowing to them. Then I also took the bow on behalf of them as well. Mm -hmm. So it took all of that pressure off of me and I just started having fun on stage. And then it helped me with my storytelling as well. So, and I tried to help my students through that route. And it's helped a lot of them to, to get the pressure off of them, take the attention off of them and to use it as their opportunity to say thank you. Or this is just another opportunity to, to share this gift that I have. And, and it's helped them a lot. So that's the one thing that I wanted them to walk away. That's one of the experiences that I pulled from that and, and gave last, to them. These last few minutes, Jackie, are just full of wisdom to to stop the fear of being like everyone else and my voice my choice yeah being your person in your space and having the freedom to do so and then to the the opposite of stage fright is gratitude gratitude absolutely what and mindfulness wisdom. yeah my and mindful just being mindful of this moment mm -hmm. that uh, when i think about and i it's i mean it's every family could probably every singer can probably identify with this that there's someone who supported me who did not have this platform 
And because of their support and their love and them pushing me towards this goal, mm -hmm. I get to stand on this platform and say, thank you in this, in this unique way. Oh, like I'm standing here because that. of you. Enjoy that. Yeah, oh, enjoy your work oh. here. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. I'm totally sharing that story with all my singers around next <laughs> tech rehearsal. That's so true. Yeah, yeah. Think yeah. of all the people you get to stand in, like you get to stand in for who have yeah. pushed you yeah. to that point. Absolutely. So, There's a, my, I told you my favorite, I, I don't know if I share this with you, but one of my favorite quotes is I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. That's what, that's it. it. It's a Maya who's, Angelou who quote. My, oh, Maya oh. Angelou. Yeah. I stand as one, but I come as 10,000. And it's so true. When I stand on that stage in that moment, there are thousands of people, of loved ones who have gone on. Gone on. Um, my dad said that my grandmother was a, she prayed all the time. Like he thought that she was like crazy when he was younger because she, he would always hear a mumble. But when he got older, he realized that she was praying. So I'm going to take that as she was praying for me and she didn't even know me. She did, I, had, I wasn't even here yet. So her prayers for her son and everything that was attached to him, which is me, you know, I receive, I'm a benefactor of that. So when I stand on that stage, she is there too. You know, so all of those people are there cheering me on and I stand as those 10,000. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. With those 10,000. What, yeah. what a gorgeous quote. I, I just interviewed someone for another episode that studied with Maya Angelou and to hear what you learn and to hear how you've applied that quote to music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just beautiful. Yeah. She and the person I interviewed really related everything to literature because that's what she studied mm -hmm. under her for mm -hmm. with her master's but to hear you i come as one but sent by but i come as stand with ten thousand. yeah man what a beautiful yeah. way to look at stage fright and to just see how you've taken your stories of music and changed lives with them mm -hmm. let's talk about life change so you're you're pivoting what are you what are you pivoting from and what are you pivoting to i am pivoting from being in the classroom and into more one-on-one -on -one empowerment with uh, my clients now that I'm a life coach. So I, it's something that I've been doing all my life, but never really had a title to it. <laughs> and mm -hmm. then when COVID hit, right, everybody was trying to figure out like, what's the next steps? What's the next move? Mm -hmm. um, and I was already considering this position before COVID um, because I wanted to be an asset to my students. So. I was trying to figure out what can I get into? What can I get my hands into that I can help my students on another plane? Because a lot of them were coming to me with so many different issues. And I wanted to make sure that I was equipped enough to handle that part. Because that's, I mean, we're going to prepare them for their careers, right? But then they have to be able to sustain, be, you know, to sustain themselves sustain in those career. careers. Yeah. So what can I get? What are those little blocks that I can give them to help build them internally and mentally, you know, to help them be, um, successful in those careers. So when COVID hit, I started, you know, this whole life coaching training, you know, everything was online. So it was easy to go on classes online and get the certification, which I started prior to, but I was able to really dig in and finish it um, during COVID. So that, um, I, when I got into that, I started feeling the shift out of the classroom and just working with students one-on-one. -on -one. And then I got the courage to, you know, to say, you know, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. So this, that's my next big project. My next big move is, I think it's, it's the work that I'll do the second half of my life. It'll probably be some of the best. When I say best, I mean, the, the, the good that I put out. Mm -hmm. I think this is, this is what I was, you know, crafted for. All of those things, like I said, nothing's wasted. So mm -hmm. all of that stuff that I brought with me from my beginning of my career up until now, um, all of my experiences with illnesses and loss of family members, all of those things now are packaged into this uh, one big curriculum for uh, this next half of my of my life. Yeah, so I'm super excited. I love it. And I love this nothing is wasted, clinging to that as a way of empowering others. And I love how you call you're looking for a place to be an asset for your students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's let's identify what some of those things are. What did you feel? What were they coming to you with? We've talked about preparing them for their careers, but what type of asset were you trying to be? What were you helping them with? Um, how to just deal. Uh, um, what I was finding was challenges really rocked them to their core. They could be the most, to me, they seem very minor. But what I had to realize was they did not have the coping, they didn't have the tools in order to maneuver and navigate simple challenges like 
the professor, this professor um, didn't, didn't do X, Y, and Z. Well, did you have a conversation with the professor? No. Well, let's start there. Let's go and have a conversation. So it's like the little small thing. It was from those little things to big family issues that they brought along with them to college um, and them having trust issues now that they don't, they didn't, were able to trust family members at home. Like all of those things impacted the way that they studied, the way that they were, um, how they organized or were not organized and the way that they prepared for certain things. It was impacting every area of their lives. So what I wanted, what I wanted to do was, well, what I am doing now is showing and helping them to become organized, showing them what to do when you have challenges coming your way. How can we break that down? How can we prepare ourselves now? I like to call, I, I just finished the series, uh, Game of Thrones, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and it, there's that line, winter is coming. Like, how do you prepare for winter? Because we're going to always have challenges. Mm -hmm. So how do you prepare for winter? It's like winter now, right? Like we make sure we have our sweaters mm -hmm. and our nice warm, you know, our warm clothes to the forefront of our closets so that when winter comes, we can put them on and it's not a hit. It's just like a smooth transition. We know how to shift. So I want them to do that when winter comes into their lives. What do you do when you know that there's a possibility of winter? You know, so uh, um, so giving them those type of tools and leading them in those ways, that's been my main focus. It, it's kind of taken the precedent almost of teaching, um, but it goes hand in hand. It's helping them become better students, you know, by handling that stuff. That's, I know that this is, stuff. that's yeah. such a big conversation we have. We have monthly meetups for all the patrons on the Patreon page. Mm. And that's one of the biggest conversations. How do you encourage motivation? How do you help students that are, are hiding behind the screen? There's such an interesting mm. shift from generation to generation of needs. And I think mm -hmm. that flexibility and ability to pivot is what sets excellent educators apart. So you're really mm. tapping directly into that need how do we serve our students and that's let, let's talk one more thing before i ask you some deep questions okay what type of classes do you take in life coach training you t oh <laughs> anything dealing with um problem solving and um how to help people set goals how to get them how to retrain how to um shape those thoughts and words and have them to align with their actions. Like those things, mm -hmm. like let's say I'm a terrible singer. So if you're saying that you're a terrible, sing terrible singer, you're absolutely right. You know what I mean? So how can mm -hmm. we reframe what you're saying? I'm a singer um, I, and, and this is me, I'm gonna use me for example. I'm a singer that has a challenge in this area. Okay, Jackie, what is the challenge in this area? I identify it. Let's figure out some steps to, to correct this. And let's get some actions. Let's put some actions to it. So that's all. That's what I mainly focus on. Let's figure out what's going on in here. Even the secret, dark secret stuff that you don't like to voice, because those are the ones that are most deeply rooted. So let's figure that out and let's correct that. Let's change the language around it. And then let's create some strategies and some actions in order to push you towards your desired outcome. So it's really, it's about, you know, helping the thought process, getting rid of those negative thoughts and the inner critic, especially when it comes to performing, you know, artists, right? We want to get rid of those inner critics, um, how to deal with them because they're going to always be there. And, and they're really there to keep us safe instead of, the, you know, not really to destroy us, but to kind of keep us safe. You don't want to feel shame. You don't want to feel embarrassed. You don't want to fail. Mm. So how do we move around those thoughts um, in order to get to our desired outcome? So classes wow. and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so helpful. And that's exactly what so many students come to us with. I'm struggling with blank because I'm not good at blank. And the second they say what you're saying is the second they say that we need to figure out new pathways and change yeah. that thought process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. well, now that we've identified that you're highly qualified for the following conversation. Oh. Uh. <laughs> let's, let's shift to music educators. We've talked a lot about students so far. Let's okay. talk about helping educators. We have a lot of educators listening. How do we make mental shifts, especially during, let's say, burnout? This is the end of the 2021 year. Mm -hmm. How do we help educators shift and avoid burnout? This burnout is attached to the burnout from last year, you know, <laughs> with everybody trying to figure out, like, it's, this is a bad, this is a, a hard burnout here, right? Like, yes. um, there really wasn't a time to kind of catch the breath and say, okay, reset, let's move in. It's kind of been piled and stacked on top of each other. 
So this is our time to be vigilant in making sure that we have balance and to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves. You know, self-care is like the big buzzword um, around. So what does that mean? We have to figure out what does that mean for us as individuals and then creating a plan and create, not just creating a plan, but creating non-negotiable uh, actions. Um, things that we do every single day, like we get up and we brush our teeth every mm -hmm. morning. What is that other non-negotiable action that we're gonna do to make sure that, that we are well? Some may say meditation, some may go into prayer, some may, some may uh, spend outside quality time just out in nature, whatever that thing is that brings you down. You know, mm -hmm. when I say bring you down, I mean to bring you to a level of, you know, okay, I can breathe for a minute. You know, I'm mm -hmm. outside of this, my, my I'm, I'm, I'm um, not thinking about my deadlines and my, my uh, all these things that I have to do, all these tasks that I have to do. We have to identify what that activity is and be vigilant about it and placing mm -hmm. that thing in our day um, every day, um, it's a decision. We have to be, vi when I say vigilant, just as vigilant as your uh, your principal is about turning in lesson plans, mm -hmm. you have to be as vigilant about taking care of yourself, your mental self. Um, and there's no shame wrapped around that. Um, I am a form, I, I am working my way out. I think I'm a, I'm a lot better. Um, <laughs> but I, I was a terrible people pleaser. I, 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 work to make sure everyone liked me and everyone was happy with the work that I produced. And, you know, and, and then I became a perfectionist because of that, because I wanted to make sure that my work was, on, you know, on point or whatever. And I, that whole, um, that whole thing showed up in me physically to where I was having arthritic attacks. And I remember coming home late at night and my husband having to help me out of the car into my home because I couldn't walk my feet. I'm, I was swollen and, and achy. And so I, I, there came a point when I had to say, no, enough is, enough is enough. What does Jackie need? And I became vigilant in that thing and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do to take, to make sure that I am able to be here, not just for my job, but my family. Like I lived, I lived two minutes away from my mom and dad. And I would see them once a month because I was always going back and forth to Savannah to, you know, to work. And that was ridiculous. These are my parents. These are my mm -hmm. parents. So I had to had to come to grips. I had to have a real hard talk with myself and say, what is most important right now? And then again, when I figured out what was most important, then I was able to create um, action plans and strategies to make sure to support that all of that, those things were aligned and I was taking care of those things that were most important, that were my priorities. Um, so to the educators, I would say, please, please, please fight, be vigilant in figuring out how you can have that time for yourself. It is so important because if you don't serve yourself, you're not gonna be able to serve anyone else. It's gonna all crumble, trust me. I remember sitting in rehearsal, uh, choir rehearsal and the paper started shaking and not, I'm not realizing, and then I saw teardrops on my, on my score and I didn't know where they were coming from. And I realized I was crying and they didn't even know it. Yeah. I was, I was having an, an emotional breakdown right there in the middle of rehearsal. Like it almost brings me to tears now that I was that oblivious to what was going on mm -hmm. that the, I was having these physical reactions and that yeah. was, that was a big wake up call for me. Yeah. Yeah. We all just, we push so hard. We, we love what we do. We uh, love absolutely. Music. We're all in it for some really big reason. We don't have a nine to five. We don't clock out. That's right. It is all the time. And what you're saying is not just identifying that you're getting to that point, but prior to that point or when you're at that point, mm. being vigilant to establish routines yes. such as yes. meditation. Whatever those things For are. For me, it's yeah. sleep. It yeah. Is, yeah. I have the hardest time sleeping when I'm just going pedal to the metal and you I are such a sleep. busy body i don't even know your life exhausts me girl I, when <laughs> I look, <laughs> like your life exhausts me what in the world it's genetic you jackie it, you're it? just like you yes think about your family and all of the like sunshine loving qualities you started with who you are because yeah. of your family because of yeah, your yeah, parents. yeah um go meet my dad and go meet my papa we are all like a bunch of about like i look calm compared to my dad and papa i mean papa's slowing down now finally but uh -huh. they're all a bunch of bouncy balls all over the yeah. place yeah yeah that's that is funny it's but bad you, uh, yeah speaking of those things that we inherit, like so certain there are things that i inherit inherited from my family as well and my dad was a hard worker like he would work sun up to sun down um 
for us. He, I knew he did it for us. And I saw that and I thought that's what I was supposed to do because my mm. dad did it, you know. But right. I, I realized that, I, you know, sometimes we learn those things and we have to you know, scale back like, wait a minute, I don't have to do mm-hmm. that in order to accomplish what I. So even checking those those kind of things. And I love that you sleep. I love that you go and get rest. I like going to the beach. Like the beach is like a few minutes away from Savannah State. And there's sometimes yeah. when I'll take off and just listen to the waves and just, you know, chill out for a minute just to kind of bring me back to Jackie. You know, we talked about all those mm-hmm. titles that we we carry, mm-hmm. but I have to remember the title of me. <laughs> And I ha- and you know I'm the only one that can protect you know protect that that title, and I um you know or or the one that can nurture that title and I want and I do that by that self care stuff all of that, you know write it in my journal or you know to get the things out of my head and heart and put it in on paper that's that's the way I like to m- dump those things out on paper and kind of you know be done with that so there are ways that we can take care of ourselves but I just I want I want that for educators I saw what what teaching online did to educators. Mm. So many. So many and wonderful educators. People who are, I saw passion being drained out of them because oh, that's of That's exactly whole- the visual. And you know, you say it so often, you know, encouraging educators to really take care of themselves mentally and emotionally. And it is so hard to do. You've given us some tips and some tools. What else would you do to encourage educators to really just get through this i so if if definitely number one is taking that time for for themselves that's and and when i say vigilant it's hard because like you said our job is not a nine to five it's around it's around the clock sometimes we have to build those boundaries to where Mm -hmm. we do take care of ourselves we have to say no sometimes Mm -hmm. the first time i got the hang of saying no i was like i like this Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I found, I finally cast a vote for me. And I was reading in James Clear book, Atomic uh, Habits. Oh, I love um, that book. I love, such love a that good book. book. Oh, such, it is really good. And there's that one part that clicked with me about casting a vote for yourself. And it's like, it doesn't, he said, the majority wins, right? The majority mm-hmm. wins. It doesn't mean that every vote will go to you, but let the majority of those votes win for you. So every time you take, you know, take 15 minutes, to 30 minutes outside of your classroom just just to take a breather you're casting a vote for me you know mm-hmm. uh, every time you you say no no my choir can't do this this event you know I thank you for inviting us but you know we just not able to do this one um that's casting a vote for for you know for you sometimes you have to be a little selfish and, and take those moments now um so that's key the other thing that I would say is remember your why why did you sign up for this? Why did you choose music? Why did you, you know, say that this is the career I want? And go back to those moments. Uh, do some deep searching. Why did I say yes to this? What would my life be without it? Um, could I, could I, you know? And then try to figure out ways to keep that fire burning and, and stoked, you know, by by remembering your why. You know, why did I choose music? Um, that's always helped me too. And then think about those little faces that you're teaching, those faces that you're teaching. You never know. You might not to add any pressure, but you never know. You may have the next great oral director sitting in your midst. Mm-hmm. And I always, one of the questions I ask myself um, when I feel like I want to quit is what is at risk? Mm-hmm. If I quit, what is at risk? What do I risk losing? Or who, who will lose out because I quit? Oh, that's such a good question. Yeah. So that, that's something I think we all could take a second to think about, especially as we go into the new year. Mm-hmm. What is at risk if we don't take time, if we don't say no, if yeah. we don't reconnect with our passion? You're always talking about motivation and keeping the passion. As mm-hmm. we're wrapping up 2021, what tips do you have for finding motivation or staying motivated and, and rekindling that passion that's been drained out? Uh, I can I can speak for me personally. It's taking those moments of just chilling out and not doing. Like really, sometimes not doing is a way to have me to come back to. You know, they say absence makes the heart grow mm-hmm. fonder. Like you know, just just if you can give yourself a half a day. I mean, for those who are hard addicts <laughs> and have to just hit it, hit it, hit it all the time, just say, hey, I'm going to for the first five hours of this day. Like let's say on the break for the first five hours of this day, I'm not going to do anything related to my job. I'm just going to tend to me, Mm -hmm. just going to tend to me and then give yourself the the last five, then plan out the last five hours of that day and say, this is what I'm going to take care of. 
and being kind to yourself when you do not get everything done on your list. That used to be like really hard for me. Like I would beat myself up. Self-condemnation, that was Jackie all day, every day. Um, I'm not this, I'm not good enough. I got to work hard because I got to get to this level. Be nice to yourself. Allow yourself to take care of what you can take care of. And then let's roll, roll some stuff over to the next day and be at peace with that, being still with that. Um, that has helped me a lot, just trying to trying to link into that. Um, for me, that has helped keep my motivation going. I was like, okay, Jackie, you got this done, good girl. Next project, you know, let's see what we get done today. Just being nice to myself. Um, and that has helped me with, with keeping my motivation. Now there, with the, with, when it comes to the burnout, um, it, this is a special situation here because we've had a whole pandemic attached to just the normal ends, of, you know, the normal uh, stress that comes to teaching. Um, so we really have to link, I know the buzzword also has been mental health. We really have to look at how we can become healthier mentally um, so that our motivation doesn't get muddled with all this other stuff that's going on. Um, a lot of, the, when I work with my clients, it's all about deep inside work being really, really honest with what your needs are, what, you, what your wants are and what your needs are and really trying to come up with a plan that's going to serve those things. Um, and everything else that does not serve those things, we have to say no to. We have to be, again, vigilant and say no to those things if they go against what the big picture is. That has also helped me to kind of keep on my vision locked in on what, you know, that thing that I want to do. Um, just make sure that I weed out all those little extra things that keep me off off task. Um, but yeah, be, and, and that's a way of being kind to yourself too, is not allowing those other distractions to take over. Because once they take over, then mentally we're done, we're exhausted, and then we don't want to do anything. Then we shut down and then we watch, mm -hmm. you know, a whole series on Netflix and ruin our whole day. <laughs> yeah, there's a time and a place to sit and watch a series. I totally- There are, but you can schedule those things. Yes. You can schedule those you things. Can, there's nothing that wrong with that. Moment. Yes. Yeah. But when you know you have like st stacks of paper on papers on your desk that mm -hmm. need to be done immediately and you feel yourself shutting down, you know, and then you go to Netflix, that's just, that's your coping mechanism. That's, mm -hmm. you know, but there are other ways that, we, again, preparing for winter, there are things that we can do along the way to kind of prepare us for those moments when, you know, so we won't go through those crash and burns. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So if yeah. someone feels a crash and burn is coming. Yeah. What's what's your step by step process? Like your it's holiday season, it's concert season, it's kick off mm -hmm. the spring semester season. There's a lot of things that can be noise. Mm -hmm. Once we've reestablished our why, what are the steps if you feel that shutdown coming? Okay. So I love planning. All right. So what, one of the things that really have really helped me to avoid crash and burns is being, being mindful of each and every single day. Meaning I'm gonna make sure that I assign a task to each of my hours during the day. That I'm not just saying, okay, I know I need to take care of this, this, and this, and not really have a plan for it. So I love I love planning out my day. Nine o'clock, I, I even plan out when I wake up. You know, up and at that's what I have on my little, my little Google calendar, it's called up and at them. That's my alarm to get up, my commute to Savannah. I have that marked out prepare for eight o'clock class, eight o'clock class, nine o'clock. I'm doing some, you know, some meditation or some, some, I'm um, reading my, you know, reading something inspirational or listen to a motivational video. Um, 10 o'clock I'm doing this. Like I, I sketch out my day to the hour. That way I know that I'm taking care of everything day by day instead of letting things just those things that I need to do just float around and mm -hmm. letting them pile up somewhere that they're all waiting for me at the end of the semester. And I'm looking like really, really crazy, right? So I would say just being organized and really structuring your day. Be be vigilant about how you spend your time each day. That's mm -hmm. our most, um, people have heard this all the time. That's our more, most valuable asset. You can't get it back. Once it's lost, you can't get it, get it back. But be, look at your day. Figure out what you're going to do each hour of the day and just commit, start committing to having a schedule. Organization has been the key to my, oh, it has saved me. Mm -hmm. You've always been super organized. And like, I've always admired that about you. No, I know for real, like, I'm serious. I am so serious. Like I, when you're like, okay, we do this. I'm, I'm going to send you a, a, an invite. Da, 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 da. I'm going to say, I'm going to put you in my calendar. Like I, you're super, you're very good at doing that. Um, and, and now I see that's why you're able to like, you know, get so much done in your, in your career, because you have been that, since I've known you, you've been that person. 
So um, that mm -hmm. that has helped me a lot, being that organized to so so that things are getting checked off each day, and so that we don't set ourselves up for crash and burns mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And then it comes back to just being wise with what you say yes to, and wise to what you say. You know, mm -hmm. make sure those. You know, you being very, you know, intentional about those things. That's one of my favorite words: being intentional. Mm -hmm. If it does not serve the the greater, per, if it does not serve the greater picture, then say no to it. If it does, okay, let's book, let's book that in. So um, it's weeding those things out that are not that important and really focusing on those things that hold the most weight, what needs to be done. Um, and just take, again, organizing those hours and those, I hope I'm answering your question. No, this I, is perfect. You're, you're actually giving some good ammunition. I struggle with no, I have gotten better at it. I, I would like to say I'm getting better every year. It is always my goal to learn mm -hmm, how to say mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. But one of the ways that I have found that I'm able to say no more easily without the guilt trip internally mm -hmm. is by using the calendar. Like I yeah. completely hear what you are saying and I would love to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. I can't make that work in my calendar because yeah. I do yeah. live by the hour by hour schedule. Yeah. yeah, it is. It has worked miracles in my life. I mean, just knowing that I'm taking care of the things mm -hmm. that are most important to me and everything mm -hmm. else. If I can squeeze it in, great. If I can't, I'm not going to feel guilt and, and releasing yourself from the guilt. Mm -hmm. It's okay. To, it's the hardest part. And that was me because I was a people pleaser. Like I wanted everyone super happy with me and what I had to give. But then I saw that I was suffering and making everyone else happy. And that mm -hmm. was not fair to me. Right. To me. I had to put myself a little higher on the list. Throw your vote. Yeah. Have you ever read um, Eat the Frog? or? I haven't. Oh, yeah. as you're talking, like, I'm like, yes. So in Eat the Frog, it's this idea that the first thing you do is the thing you least want to do all day. Yeah. It's the yeah. biggest, most nastiest right. frog you've ever eaten. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. so I, but I use that in rehearsals. Like, what's the hardest thing we've got to get out of the way? And we always yeah. start with that. And I'm like, we're singing a frog, y'all. Let's sing a frog. <laughs> but I love it. What I love, I love about it. what you're saying is, if you can if you can get organized, whatever that looks like for you, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, when it's done, you walk away. And yeah. honestly, I think that's why I got organized is I really wanted to play piano for hours every day. That's all I wanted to do growing up. Uh, yeah. And I realized that if I could organize my afternoon after school, I could get all my work done and then I could just play piano for hours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so that was my motivation early on. And now as I've gotten older, if I can get all my work done, I can pour that glass of wine and cook a fancy dinner and not worry a lick. And oh my gosh, the power of do not disturb on your cellular devices. I'm telling you that is a game changer. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I think it's so funny that we always scream to our students, you need to study your music, come back prepared. Da, da, da. We, we're, that's like our mantra. And there's that quote, like when you fail to prepare, you prepare to you fail, prepare to fail. Yeah. yeah why can't we just slip that into our lives like why can't we make that our, our, yeah. our models in our lives it's the same thing we have to pre we have to again winter is coming we okay. have we know that all this stuff is going to pile up at the end of the of the semester we need to be pre prepared along the way so that when mm -hmm. winter comes we are ready mm -hmm. for it we have everything in line yeah so and it's not gonna, we're going to survive it I love that you're saying like this whole prepare your music. I tried something different this semester. I provided yeah. um, all different types of ways to study the music, but I said, it is up to you. And so at our last rehearsal before the tech rehearsals, if you're memorized, great. That is not a badge of honor by any means. This is a very unique situation. It's our first time singing. Mm -hmm. Yes, we sing better when it's internal and you can just emote the music. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but if that's mm -hmm. not where you are, don't use a badge of honor and try to lip sync pick up the music and hold it so it's so interesting because there's like some some of the singers have music some of them don't and it's so interesting when you give them the choice mm -hmm. yes they did or did not make the choice to mm -hmm. be engaged in rehearsal or listen between rehearsals whatever but why do we do music i think that's key going back to the why going back yes. because okay what you just said i've i'm a lot of my music friends i could see them being super stressed out about their students not having it memorized and so there are a couple of things that you did there you for the students they're learning that okay i 
I chose this and I'm looking around at my classmates and they have their stuff totally memorized. Next time I'm going to have my stuff memorized. I'm going to be ready to roll. So that's a lesson that they learned. For you though, you the, the lesson of shifting, I'm not going to stress myself out about this. Take That's something that you, I've once have heard, I can't remember where I heard it from, but I've once heard that to suffer is to is is you elect to suffer, like you volunteer mm-hmm. to suffer. And in a lot mm-hmm. of parts of our lives, we do. We stick mm-hmm. our hand up and say, "Yeah, I want to focus on this, and I want to just flip out and, and stress myself I out." I volunteer as tribute. I volunteer right? as tribute. This right. This is not the Hunger Games; it is choir. <laughs> right, right. So why in that moment, if we would all, and this is another thing that I learned that has helped me in that moment when I feel myself getting getting anxious and ready to just like stress out, Jackie, is, is it worth it? Mm. What are some other ways that we can shift in mm-hmm. this moment? Shift has been my word since August. What? How can we shift in this moment instead of bumping up against this thing that is not moving? How mm-hmm. do we shift? And in that, in your instance, it's more, it's more, I it's mean, harder. it makes life easier. It, it's, it's harder. If you are the type of person that is stuck on, like, it has to go my way. You know what I mean? But in that moment when you shift, you're saying, I'm just surrendering to this and it's still going to be fine. Right. You have saved yourself suffering mm-hmm. by not, you know, fuming over the fact that some of your students did not do right. what you asked them to do. <laughs> like what's so cool about it is I know it will open the door for conversation. So we do have other events where it's a little bit more important that we're memorized. Yeah, yeah. We there have some go. really big events coming up. But now instead of me saying, memorize your music or else, yeah. <laughs> I get to come back in January and be like, Let's assess our concert. What was good? What could be there better? There you go. What do we want to change? How do we feel about having music at this event in February? I love and let it. it be their decision. Removing that weight. That you allowing them to have the be a part of the creative process is everything. You let let them tell you what they thought about it. Let them tell you what could be done. That's because it's their program too. I mean, if we didn't have them, we'd just be waving our hands to air. Right. So allowing them to be a part, they are a big part, they are a big response. They have responsibilities too in this situation as well. Mm-hmm. So I love that you allow them to have those conversations and to and to vocalize um, what they could have done as an ensemble and as individuals. It's important mm-hmm. for them to say, as an individual, I could have done X, Y, and Z. And that, I believe that that trickles into every other area of their lives. I, I take responsibility for not preparing for my test in history. Because mm-hmm. I could have did this better. I could have done this better. I could. Have, I mean, I, I love those lessons. That's a blessing in, into itself. And letting them know, this is, hey, guys, this is a lesson that I need you to take into every other part of it. Right. Making yeah, those intentional choices. transfers. And yeah, you, absolutely. You've set us up for those conversations. Like, these are things I'm doing because our students have come in a different mental place than ever. Mm-hmm. They're also mm-hmm. at a weird point. Mm-hmm. And we're having to be more flexible. And what you're providing us with, you know, pause, reflect. Mm-hmm. What what are you going to say yes or what are you going to say no to? Yeah. And for me, I'm not going to fight the battle of we're off book because I would rather them be comfortable on stage and have Absolutely. a memorable and enjoyable experience. It might not look as good. It might not sound as good, but we're singing together. Yeah, we're together and we're having this moment that's together. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you that's... have the bigger ones. You have the big, yeah, I mean, of course, you have the bigger performances, but you you have to pick your battle. You have to pick mm-hmm. your battle. Yeah. Yeah. And that's such life. I love this quote that you, you use this quote all the time. Being grounded, being intentional, being present. How does that kind of summarize everything we've talked about today? Being grounded. All right. So I like to break that up into pieces. So being grounded and connected. I like to put those together. So when we're grounded and connected, we're finding that thing that anchors us, that we can always go back to home base, to the, to the tonic key to give our, you know, to, to, you know, bring us back home. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have to find that. And that's that thing that we have to be vigilant about in order to create that space and that atmosphere to become grounded, whether it's through meditation, prayer, God, you know, uh, you know, everybody has their own, their own thing. Um, but coming back to the center, coming back to center. And sometimes people have to fight for that because of mm-hmm. all the outside noise, right? So you have to fight in order to stay grounded and connected, to be focused, and clear, and that's about what you want, mm-hmm. and to and to stay on that path. Know know what you want, and then know, um, be focused on that. Let that be your goal, the goal, the thing that I'm shooting for. Also, let me go back to the grounded, being grounded. Um, 
a lot of that has to be has has to do with knowing who you are. I floated through a lot of my life not knowing who Jackie was and wh and what her value was and what her weight was in this life. Um, and because of that, I was just floating around and just you know you know I allow things to, to that I allow challenges to cha uh, to challenge who I was, and then I started doubting myself and I didn't have the confidence. So we have to know who we are and stand strong in that. One of my favorite scenes in Black Panther is when um, when Mbaku and uh, T'Challa are in the water and they're fighting each other. Who's going to be, become Black Panther? This is, of course, the beginning of the movie. And Mbaku has Black Panther in like this death hold and he's bent backward. You know, T'Challa's bent backwards and he's about to lose this battle. And then he looks at his mother and his mother says, show them who you are. I love that part because it was when she said that he was able to overcome Mbaku and take his you know rightful reign as Black Panther. But we have to know who we are so that we can show the world who we are. That's going to impact everything that we are because we're operating out of the center of who we are, out of our strengths, out of our those characteristics that are that are naturally ours. Like mine being light, you know, sunshine. I, I'm capitalizing on that. If everybody, all these people are seeing it then I'm going to say I am light and I'm going to capitalize on that. I'm going to make sure that everything that I do is going to cast light and it's going to make people feel lighter when they leave me. So that's the, that's the grounded, that's the grounded and connected clear and focused. I know what I want. This is what I want. And I'm going to focus in on that task, being intentional, everything that, that I do say and think is going to align with who I am, what I want. And we're going to put all that together and we're living our inspired life from there. So that is like my, that's my go-to phrase there, Jack, uh, for me. Jackie, you're going to be, uh, uh, make sure that you're grounded, make sure that you're connected. And I, my emotions tell me when I'm not, when I feel agitated, when I feel, mm. you know, stressed out, oh, she's not aligned. Something is out of alignment. Let's go back and check my steps here. Am, do I, am I operating out of who I am? Am I grounded? Am I connected? Am I focused on my goals? Am I really working towards my goal? Am I being intentional? And more than likely, one of those steps are out of alignment when I feel myself being stressed and yes. ready to shut down. So I'm, I go through and I check my steps. And then when I find out what that, that out of line block is, I work, I find a strategy to pull that block back into alignment. And then I feel myself feeling lighter, motivated, moving on tasks, and I'm living this inspired life. So um, that's that tagline. That's what that means to me. And I want my clients to feel that as well. And to use that as a tool to kind of check themselves. Check their well, I, I just made a post-it note and stuck it to my computer. There are <laughs> times when we are anxious and stressed and I'm always like, maybe I'm tired, maybe I'm hungry. But really it's, am I grounded? Am I connected? Am I intentional? And am That's I present? It. Man, I'm going to steal it. It's so good. <laughs> Take it, girl. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I, I always ask the listeners, what's one thing they want to walk away from this episode with? Like, what do you want the listeners to walk away with? But I, I'm, I'm answering for you. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> be on. grounded, That's be connected, be intentional, and be present. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. All that equation, it, make, it gives for an inspired life. It does. Oh. We start moving. And we start, we're motivated. We're passionate about our, our, you know, what we're doing. So for educators, that's, that's one of the things that I... It, the past couple of seasons of, my, of being an educator, just checking those spots and making sure that I'm aligned and that those blocks are, are aligned and I'm ready to, uh, you know, it helps me to, to find those areas where I'm, you know, not aligned and then work on them. And then, hey, I'm back on task. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I feel like I could title this episode 5 million things. Like <laughs> I want to call it like getting aligned. I also like finding our inspired life. I also like, show them who you are. <laughs> I've written down so many possible titles. Oh. My voice, my choice. Yeah. Nothing is wasted. Like, which of these do I pick, Jackie? This is going to be the hardest episode to title. Oh. oh, that's funny. You know, someone said that I, I spoke at this, um, I spoke at this church uh, in July, June, I think, and I find I have to learn how to edit because I find that when I speak to people, it's like a thousand different things. And I, and I don't mean to do that, but they, they, they were telling me like, you had so many things in there. I wanted you to slow down and like, just break things down. But I know you were, do, you know, just giving a speech and I don't, yeah. So I just, oh, I got an idea. I'm sorry about that. I got an idea. I'm going to throw that? it out there. I have an idea. I want my next book to be on leadership 
I'm just obsessed with it. I think it mm. is such a challenge, especially for the students in my classroom. So many of them mm. struggle. And sometimes I'm being very honest and transparent. Okay. Maybe I'll edit this out. <laughs> sometimes I struggle with why do other people not just do their stuff? Like when someone doesn't do something, I'm like, well, why did you choose not to do that? I don't understand. We have the same number of hours. Why did you choose not to do something? So I, I struggle with that. Okay, so now yeah, we're yeah, clear. Yeah. I've been really yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's because we all have different leadership styles. Yes. And yes. I think the definition of leadership is changing. Mm -hmm. And we have older titles like servant leadership. And we have so many books out there in the leadership spectrum. Mm. But what you've provided us with today is how to lead from every, there's there's like full on leaders, there are quiet leaders. You've given us the tools to be all the different kinds of leaders for all the situations. Mm. I think I'll help you, I'll be the organizer and we'll put it together, to, we'll put it together together. Come on that's, girl. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> Just, I'm speaking oh, it into the universe. It's the end I of the love, year. Let's pull. I can speak things into you the universe. You can do it now. That's right. Because we are ready to go into 2022. I can't And I want 2022 to be different. I want every person and our educators, because we've been beaten. <laughs> educators have had a hard road these mm -hmm. past couple of years. But if we could just, in, our, in, in ourselves, in our inner selves, just resolve to make 2022 different. You can't change what's going on in the world. But we can change. We we can change what's going on in this inner world right here inside of mm. us. So what can we do differently going into twenty twenty two? We can we, be grounded and connected yeah. and Let, intentional let's and go. present. Let's go. I love let's it. Go. Uh, yeah. Jackie, this has been such a great conversation. Thank you so much for sharing you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to do so. It's, this is you allow me to put some good out there. Thank you. Thank well, this you. is the best end of 2021. Thank you so much. And we will talk more soon. Yes. Thank you so much. Grounded, connected, intentional, and present. That's how I'm going into 2022. I can't wait to show them who I am. <laughs> I hope that you have enjoyed this episode. I'm so thankful that you took the time to listen. I want to know what you think. Feel free to jump over to patreon.com slash music ed matters and join that community. We'd love to have you as part of the team. It is such an invigorating place to be able to have these conversations and to, to be grounded and connected and intentional and present with other people that are in the same boat or different boats or whatever as you people who love music and love music education. If you could take a second before the year ends and drop a comment or a review or a rating, that would be really helpful as we go into some big goals for 2022. I'm really thankful that you've listened to this year. I can't wait to see what we all do together in 2022. You know, you, my friend, you really matter. We all know that music matters, especially my voice, my choice, and everything we've learned today. And I'll see you next time. I'll see you next year on the Music Ed Matters podcast. <laughs>